As we move to wrap up the Scrum Master Certification Series, this nugget and the next nugget are all about how to make your organization more Scrum-like. This nugget is focused on how to deal with organizational resistance, and the next nugget will be focused on how to really get started with Scrum in your organization. But first, how to deal with organizational resistance, and I guess the first answer is expect I was going to say some, but I think it's probably better to say expect lots of resistance. Scrum is new, or Scrum is relatively new. As I, I said in the introduction, Scrum is not that new. It's been around for 10 years. But there's a lot of people, a lot of businesses, and a lot of individuals in your business who are just hearing about it for the first time. So whether or not it is really new, and I would argue it's not new, a lot of people see Scrum as new, and every time there's change, there's resistance. So in this nugget, we're going to focus on how to deal with the resistance. We're going to talk about the team resistance. What if the team members on your Scrum project are not fully aligned with Scrum? What if your business and product owner are not fully aligned with Scrum? And as I will say in this nugget, if we don't have business and product owner alignment with Scrum, we might as well pack up our bags and forget about trying to be Scrum because they are key. If they don't support Scrum, we're going to have a lot of troubles. But absolutely be prepared for organizational resistance. It's new, it's change, it's different. Why do we want to do this? There will be specific parts of the organization, and I'm going to focus on HR and facilities, where the concepts of Scrum that we've talked about with co-location, with leaderless teams, will provide lots of stress into the traditional HR and facilities parts of your organization. So we'll talk about how we're going to deal with that. And we'll wrap this nugget up with probably one of the areas I found the most resistance is within my own IT department. The PMO, the architects, the various other team members in IT may not be fully supportive of Scrum. As I said, I'll often get a lot of resistance in that area and we'll spend a considerable amount of time in this nugget on how to deal with and how do we eliminate the organizational resistance. But first, team resistance. And I'm actually hoping you all have limited team resistance because we want to hand pick our Scrum teams. At least initially, and we'll talk about that a little more in the next nugget. But initially, we want our first introductory Scrum teams to be handpicked to be the people that we know are committed and ready to be, do better, i.e. ready to be Scrum. So again, assuming that there should be limited team resistance, the innovators, the, the forward thinkers in your organization are going to come to you and say, Steve, I hear you're, you're introducing Scrum into the organization. I'd love to work with you. But they're still going to have some concerns. Anything that's new, anything that's going to cause a change is going to create concerns. So whether you like it or not, whether they are committed, whether they're ready to do better, whether they want to be Scrum, there's still going to be some lingering concerns about it's new. Will I do well? Is it going to be something I like? Is it going to be something that, that, that works for me? So be prepared for even the most advocate, even the most excited, those that go screaming to your desk, say, Steve, pick me, pick me, pick me. There's still going to be some reservations, and probably reservations is a better term than resistance. So make sure you have the support material. This is Scrum. Go read some good books. Do presentations in your organization, but be prepared to, to deal with the concerns around the new and the change. A lot of team resistance is going to come from this exact point right here, the career path. No longer do we have a defined career path. And when I grew up in the IT industry, I started as a developer, and then I became a uh, programmer analyst, and then I became a senior programmer analyst, and then I became an analyst, and then I became a senior analyst, and then finally I moved into project management where there was very much a defined career path. 
when people first begin to look at Scrum, they don't see any career path because we have the self-managed team of equals. So if I'm on a team of equals, how do I differentiate myself? How do I distinguish myself from another equal who is a green bean and I've got 10 or 15 years experience? So again, how do I distinguish? How do I show my career path? The short answer is their career path is based on performance. And if you are a strong performing Scrum team member, you're going to get recognition. And when I say recognition, you're going to get corporate recognition. You're not going to just get recognition that says, yep, there's Fred. He's a real good Scrum performer. You're going to get corporate recognition. You're going to get the raises. You're going to get the attention from management. You may not go through the standard career path with the titles. And, and maybe I'm a little jaded about titles, but a title is a title. And yes, I understand titles are important to a lot of people, but it's the performance that really counts. And it's the performance that's going to get your team members the recognition. So again, as you're trying to provide the supporting material, one of the areas of supporting material we need to focus on is to ensure they understand there's a career path. And as a matter of fact, I think people aren't so much concerned about the career path as the raise and the recognition path. So as long again as we can ensure our scrum team members that their performance is going to be recognized, their concerns about the career path and the titles should go away. And then really we touched on this at the introduction. What if I don't like it? What if I'm really no good at it? What if I, I go from this established career path that I'm now in the SA career path. I know my next promotion is to senior systems analyst. What if I th quote unquote throw all that away and say I'm going to become one of these equal scrum team members and what if I'm really no good at it? Or what if it's a fad? And what if Scrum doesn't last? Well, I don't have a real solid basis for answering all of those questions, but the fact is, if the team member comes in and they don't like it, unless your organization has gone for the all-in approach, which we'll discuss in the next Nugget series, there's always a fallback. Assuming that your organization is not going 100% Scrum, if they try Scrum and they find they just don't like it, there's always a fallback. Go back to being the SA and get on that career path for the promotion to SSA. What if I'm no good at it? Well, chances are they will be good at it. So to me, rather than trying to say, well, if you're no good at it, it's the same thing as if you don't like it, there's a fallback. I would prefer to take the more positive approach to that says, what do you mean if you're not good at it? You're awesome. You're a solid performer in this organization. I think you're, you're doing terrific work in this organization. I'm really, really, really excited that you've come to me and want to be part of the Scrum world. You're going to excel. You're going to be awesome. So again, it's, instead of trying to say, if you're no good at it, We'll find a way for you to fit in. Build them up. Get them excited. Get them on the scrum train. And I don't think that's going to be an issue that, that anyone's going to care about. And what if scrum doesn't last? What if it's a fad? Well, the fact is, it's business as normal. And in very few organizations, is anyone ever going to be penalized for getting on a corporate bandwagon and I'm going to call Scrum a corporate bandwagon and giving it a try and if it doesn't last then we go back to business as normal. So yes these are all standard human characteristics. These are all standard human traits related to the new, the change. Recognize it, support them, tell them try it, you'll like it, 
I want to say I guarantee you'll like it, but I think that's probably too strong a word. There will be a few people that may try it and won't like it. But generally speaking, 95, 96, 98% of the time, they're going to try it and they're going to like it. So we don't worry about that one. We don't worry about that one because we know they're going to be good at it. And what if it doesn't last? It is going to last because it is the better way. So although, again, we should have limited team resistance, be prepared. And I think the best way to be prepared is with the appropriate support material to educate the team, the organization on what is Scrum and why Scrum is wonderful. And as I said in the introduction, I hope you have no business or product owner resistance because they are key. And literally, if you're getting resistance from your business and your product owner, they're not the right people. So yes, you can do some education. And yes, you can do some support. Just like we talked about for the team resistance. But if you're dealing with any more than the standard concerns, and I will stress concerns about the change, about the new, if you feel that the resistance you're getting from the business and product owner has any degree of strength to it, I think it's time to find a new project. I think it's time to find a new area for Scrum because without the business and without the product owner's support of Scrum, as we talked about in the earlier nuggets where we're describing the role of the business and the role of the product owner, they're key. So assuming we only have the standard concerns about the newness, what are the concerns? Where are we going to get resistance from the business and the product owner? It's there's no guarantees or the perception is there's no guarantees. So Steve, you're coming to me with this thing called Scrum. You tell me I'm gonna write all of my business requirements on, on little pieces of cardboard, my three and a half by five index cards. And you tell me that we're going to work through a priority process, that we're going to, to pick these and you're going to tell me how many of these you can do on a, on a, a sprint by sprint basis feels pretty loose. It feels like I'm giving you an open blank check. Steve, just go forth and take your team and start billing time to my business center. And yes, I know you're going to be producing implementation ready code at the end of every sprint. But you've also told me that this implementation code is theoretical implementation code at the end of every sprint that I actually need to do a number of sprints before I get to a release and I need to have a number of releases before I get all of my, my work. It's just there are no guarantees. Again, it's the blank check. I almost spelt check C-H-E-Q-U-E, which is the way us Canadians spell check, but I'll assume that uh, the, the, the more standard spelling of C-H-E-C-K probably applies to most of the, the people watching this series. The key is this is a perception. I hope by now in this Nugget series that there are lots of guarantees. We are going to guarantee results. We're going to guarantee we're doing the right work and just enough work to do what you want. So the guarantee is every hour is focused on results. For the business. And I'm not going to say that every hour in a traditional waterfall approach is not focused on results for the business, but they're not necessarily the most relevant, most appropriate results for the business. So again, no guarantees. My counter is I'm giving you guaranteed results. I'm going to give you the right work 
the just enough time work, the exactly what you want, that there will be no arduous change request processes, that there will be no rework, that I am spending every hour focused on delivering the results to you. So what better guarantee can I give you, the business and the product owner, than that? I'm hoping that the first time through, they're going to take this guarantee from Steve that Scrum is reliable and allow me to prove myself. And then I believe once I do one or two projects with Scrum, this concern about no guarantees is going to go away. Probably directly related to that is there's no predictability. You're telling me that I have two week sprints. And you're telling me that I'll know immediately before, I eat minutes before the sprint starts, what I'll do, what I get. And you're telling me that I need to have multiple sprints for a release. You're telling me I'm going to get a release every three to four months, question mark. Generically speaking, we want to try to get a release out every three to four months. But again, depending on the story selected, depending on the complexity of the stories, depending on how many stories need to be combined to deliver the level of business value we want, a release is not that predictable, and so on and so on. There's no predictability. I don't know when, it's going, when I'm going to get some value, and I don't know when it's going to be done. My counter to that is exactly the same counter that I gave for the no guarantees. The predictability is I'm going to do the work that you want. I'm going to do the right work and I'm going to do just enough work and I'm going to do exactly the work that you want. And if you want to identify the stories and position the stories for a sprint to give you implementable code at the end of every sprint, at the end of every two weeks, the predictability is there. You tell me what you want and I'll manage the sprint process, the scrum process to give you what you want. So again, probably a little bit of trust me up front. Let me get through a sprint or two. Let me get through a release or two. And then I'll show you how well this works and I'll eliminate your concerns about predictability. So again, I think the no guarantees, no predictability go together quite hand in hand. The other big concern that you're going to get from the business and the product owner is the time required. You're telling me I need to spend 50% at least, preferably more than that, focused on the project. I have never spent that much time on any IT project before in my life. Our business has never invested that much time in an IT project before. It's just, it's, it's, it's too demanding on our business. Well, if you want to get, I'm going back to the same thing. If you want to get exactly what you want, you have to have the time to work with the team and you will get value back for the money that you're investing. One of the reasons the traditional processes haven't worked well is we haven't spent that 50% and there's been rework. There's been changes. There's been missed requirement. There's been overruns. So yes, maybe you only spent 20% of the time on the project, but by the time you add in all of the missed changes, the rework, the overruns, and the fact that the six month project took 12 months, 100% overrun, all of a sudden that 20% is getting very close to 50%. And I know there's a 10% delta, but in the grand scheme of things, chances are, but the going with the more predictable, more performance-based scrum process, delivering more results sooner, in fact, over the life of the work, scrum probably is not as time intensive as first perceived. So in all of these cases of business and product owner resistance, there is an element of trust me, it will be better. Use industry stats, use, use all kinds of marketing and promotional material to try to get the buy-in. 
and then move forward and deliver the results. So now moving from the very direct scrum focused issues with team resistance and business product owner resistance, we're going to become a little more global and we're going to talk about organizational resistance. And probably the first form of organizational resistance that I get is scrum is just another IT fad. It's no different than when we said third generation tools, COBOL are, are now passe, and we're gonna go with fourth generation tools and everything is gonna be wonderful. And then we had fifth generation tools and then we had object oriented development and then we had rapid application development and then we had joint application design and, 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 and being around in IT as long as I have, I've seen lots of fads come and go. Why does the business think Scrum is any different? Well, my first answer is Scrum isn't new. It's 10 years old. Scrum isn't a fad. Scrum is proven. And Scrum is delivering high quality, timely results. Now, so it's not a fad, it's been around for a while, and therefore, why is our organization not willing to try something that's 10 years old? We're not bleeding edge. Will Scrum last forever? Will we be doing Scrum in the year 2100? Absolutely not. Will we be doing Scrum in 10 years? Well, it's lasted 10 years already. Will Scrum last another 10? I can't predict that. I think Scrum has many, many good years left in it. But yes, there's going to be another approach that's going to improve on Scrum. I don't think the next approach is going to be as radical and as, as innovative as the Scrum Agile approaches. But yeah, we're going to get better. But it's not better in terms of another fad. It's process improvement, which we've already discussed. You're going to get organizational resistance from everything we just talked about in terms of business resistance. It's not predictable. There are no guarantees. It's requiring so much time. It's just so different. And everything I discussed in the, the business and product owner resistance can be repeated here. And probably another key aspect that you're going to get in organizational resistance that I'm labeling executives fear anarchy. Executives like their org charts. Here is the boss. Here are the boss's reports. And so on. And so on. And so on. Scrum is leaderless. Self-organizing. How does leaderless and self-organizing fit into corporate structure. So while executives are going to sign on to Scrum that says, yes, I really like this concept of Scrum. I like the higher quality timely results, but it just causes me stress. I don't know who to go to. If I feel I have a Scrum team out of control, who do I go to? You tell me the, the product owner is only responsible for managing the backlog. Well, I don't think managing the backlog is going to help me with a an out of control scrum team. And you tell me the scrum master is not a manager. The scrum master is simply the person who is the scrum expert and expected to ensure the project remains delivered in scrum fashions. So I have this group of eight people. How do I go to a group of eight people and say, I think you're out of control? So. There's a lot of challenges to traditional organizational processes that Scrum introduce. How do we deal with it? We show results. We show willingness to improve, to adapt. If there's something our Scrum team is doing that's causing our executive stress, Take that to a retrospective. Take that to an organizational retrospective and find ways to improve. The biggest way to deal with organizational resistance is do a good job 
and advertise, you're doing a good job. Remember those metrics? We talked about capturing. Capturing metrics and using metrics to prove the value of Scrum is a key way to dealing with organizational resistance. And within the organization, my experience is you're going to get the biggest resistance from two administrative groups. You're going to get resistance from facilities. They don't want to reorg the workspace. The workspace is all set up in nice little cube farms with a desk here and a desk here and desks and so on and so on using traditional processes. They don't want to tear down all of these desks, put it into a big white space and put a table here and a table here and a great big table in the center and massive wall space here and probably some white charts here. It's a lot of effort for facilities to reorg the workspace they think, again, Scrum is a fad. They're going to spend all of this time and all of the expense to reorg the workspace. And six months later or a year later, they're going to be asked to come back in and tear this all apart and put the cubes back in. Other resistance you're going to get from facilities as simple as posting on the wall. We just paid to have that painted. What are you doing putting all of your charts on the wall? You're going to destroy the paint. I don't have a perfect answer for, for you for how to deal with administrative facilities, organizational resistance. The short answer is be ready for it and probably be willing to compromise. Yes, I understand you don't want to take all of these cubes apart. How about we compromise? How about we leave half of the cubes intact? And how about we take half of them down and turn this into a meeting space? Or how about we allocate that very large meeting room for the project team and we'll simply use the existing space? It's not ideal, but we're willing to compromise. You don't like the fact that we're posting everything on the walls, that you're worried about the newly painted walls. Well, we'll use painter's tape. Or we have these wonderful new flip charts and with the risk of using brand name that we have post-it flip charts that have the non-marring, non-paint destructive glue on them that we can again find ways to be scrum like in our in our facilities without truly stressing the overall physical environment. So be ready for it and be willing to compromise is my best suggestion for dealing with organizational resistance. And with HR, my experience is HR have the most issues with our leadership list teams. HR wants to have a boss and a subordinate role. They want people to do reviews. They want people to do salary and performance, et cetera, et cetera. Again, the only recommendation I have for you for dealing with HR is be ready for it and be willing to compromise. While we're scrum, our scrum is leaderless, self-organizing teams. But for the five days a year, we'll step out of Scrum and we'll follow traditional hierarchy. And the person who did Sally's review last year will do Sally's review this year. And either the team will contribute to Sally's performance review or maybe, just maybe, this is the one instance where the Scrum Master has to step out of being a Scrum Master and truly being a manager and consolidate and provide all of the performance reviews to the traditional HR hierarchy. So be ready for it. Be willing to compromise. But as we prove Scrum, then we need to work with HR to change the process for annual reviews 
and for the salary and performance reviews. And over time, as HR sees how well Scrum is working, I'm hoping that HR in your organization will again be open to process improvements. So don't have a lot of right answers for you in terms of how to deal with administrative resistance. All I can suggest is be ready for it. And probably the best advice I can give you is be willing to compromise because these particular groups, at least in my humble experience, I hope you, you have better luck in your organization than I have had, will often put up a lot of artificial roadblocks that we simply have to be willing to work within the artificial roadblocks because as soon as we start to try to fight those artificial roadblocks, they're going to go straight to the boss and we could risk having Scrum shut down. And finally, the area I find I get the most resistance is within my own department. Scrum challenges traditional IT. We've talked about how Scrum challenges architecture. The technical architects are going to feel challenged by Scrum and they're going to resist Scrum. How do we deal with the architects? We talked about that already. We do just in time architecture. We involve the TAs in scrums, in sprints as needed. And we try to show the wisdom to the architects of doing just in time architecture. And exactly the same applies to the database analysts. We do just in time database design. We involve the DBAs as needed, and we inject them into our Scrum processes. And I don't think I need to spend more time on those two, two, two particular roles because we've talked about that already in the series. But let's talk about where, again, we often will get a lot of support. For organizations that have large, large project delivery, you're going to have a project management office. And large project management offices like to get weekly status reports. Large project management offices like to have project schedules with projections and tracking of actuals and forecasts to complete and earned value analysis, and so on. Scrum really doesn't support any of the above. Scrum has our daily Scrum, which replaces our weekly status report. We have our progress charts and our backlogs, which are papers on the wall, which replace all of our project reporting we don't have a formal schedule beyond our sprint backlog. And we certainly don't track actuals and forecasts to complete. We have our burn rate, our velocity. So literally everything we do that Scrum is contradictory to everything that PMOs like to see with IT delivery. So again, a lot of the core resistance I would expect you're going to get to Scrum is going to come directly from the PMO. How do we deal with that? We say, let us try. And I know that's not a very good answer, but let us try. Let us prove it works. And then the thing that the PMO really doesn't want to hear is then let's disband the PMO, or better still, let's change the PMO. Instead of being a PMO, they become the Scrum support group. But there will be substantial mindset change between traditional PMO and a Scrum process group. Business analysts can often be placated, and, and maybe placated is, is, is too negative a word, but pr 
Business analysts can often be placated in the same way that the architects and the database administrators are. We include them. And finally, we're going to have the traditionalists. Nope. Can't work. We've always, always followed waterfall and nothing's going to change that. And probably bottom line is you're never going to change the diehard traditionalists. If they've always been waterfall based and they feel that waterfall is being a success, I'm not sure how much publicity and how much marketing and how much proof we're ever going to give them that says Scrum is a better way. Hopefully these traditionalists who follow Waterfall understand the stat says 20 to 30% success, 80 to 70 to 80% failure. So your traditional approaches have a very high failure rate. Why not let Scrum come in and improve those abysmal failure rates that your traditional approaches have, have done? But sometimes the traditionalist will either be left behind in the Scrum wave and the traditionalist will become the minority in your organization doing those last few vestiges of projects that for whatever reason, the business owner or the nature of, and I don't believe there is any type of project that would not be suitable for Scrum, but they will slowly atrophy themselves out of existence as Scrum takes on. So again, fairly standard, give us a chance let us prove ourselves approach to dealing with IT resistance, but be prepared for significant resistance within your own department because Scrum is going to challenge the way the architects have always worked. It's going to challenge the way the database analysts and the database managers have always worked. It's absolutely going to challenge the PMO. It's going to effectively put the PMO out of business. It continues to challenge the business analysts and the traditionalists are going to be threatened by it and the traditionalists are going to try to find ways to make Scrum not work. Not that their ways have ever worked in the past, but be prepared for resistance within your own department. This nugget was focused on dealing with organizational resistance. If I could sum up the message from this nugget, it is trust us, give us a chance to prove ourselves. Scrum works, but it will take some time to allow us to do it. You're going to get some resistance from the team. I'm hoping very minimal, but they're going to have career concerns. What if I try it and I don't like it? What if I try it and I'm no good? What happens to my next promotion? How do I make sure I'm going to get another raise? In my humble opinion, the team resistance is fairly easy to deal with simply by being reassuring, by being confident, and the team members who want to be Scrum-like will come to you. We will get some resistance probably from the business and the product owner. They're concerned about the predictability and the lack of guarantees. My answer to the business and product owner is, Trust us. Give us a chance. We will prove ourselves because the predictability is we're doing only the work we want you to do and the guarantees is and we're doing only the work that we want to do and you can control the order in which the work is done and you can in fact control this precise work that you want done. So if you need to bring changes in, Scrum is all for that. We'll talk about organizational resistance. It is challenging the way the organization works. A lot of it is very similar to the business and owner resistance, and a lot of it is executives' concern for lack of control. My suggestion to that is trust us, give us a chance, and show that Scrum is not anarchy. Scrum is defined, and Scrum has structure. 
The difference is the scrum structure is different than you're used to. You're going to get resistance from admin, again, in my humble experience, from facilities. They don't like reorganizing the space. It doesn't follow the floor plan. And you're going to get resistance from HR that the traditional chain of command, much like the executive lack of control, HR's concern about the lack of chain of command, who's going to do performance review, who's going to do salary negotiations, who's going to do all of that. Again, work with them, be prepared, and probably do some compromise. And in my humble opinion, the largest resistance we get is from the IT department itself because we are challenging their very existence. The architects, the DBAs, the analysts often don't know how they fit into Scrum. The short answer is, yes, you do. You need to adopt and become more Scrum-like. The PMO is absolutely threatened by Scrum because Scrum doesn't produce any of the standard reporting that the PMO is used to. So there will be absolute resistance and static and pushback from the PMO. Again, give us a chance. You're not being exactly successful today doing traditional development. Give us a chance to prove why Scrum is better. And obviously there will be resistance from the traditionalists who say, this is the way it's been done. It's always been done and I'm not willing to change. Again, not sure I have the best answers for dealing with all of these organizational resistance, but the fact is Scrum works, promote it, collect your metrics, your stats, toot your own horn, And with some proven success, a lot of this organizational resistance will go away. Trust me. This concludes our nugget on dealing with organizational resistance. I hope this module has been informative for you, and thank you very much for viewing.